Now let's talk about conjugates. And I'll start this with an example. I have 5 plus the square root of 3 times 5 minus the square root of 3. These two things are multiplied together. And I'll do a FOIL. I multiply first, outer, inner, and last. And my first two terms are 5 times 5, so that's 25. The outer two terms are 5 times the negative square root of 3, so that's a negative 5 root 3. And the inner two terms are the square root of 3 times 5, and I can write that as a positive 5 root 3. And my last two terms are square root of 3 times the negative square root of 3, and so that's a minus square root of 3 squared, which is just 3. And now notice something that happens here. This minus 5 root 3 and the plus 5 root 3 cancel out. And I'm just left with 25 minus 3, which is 22. And 22 is the answer. And the thing to take note of is that there are no radicals in that answer. When I multiply these two particular binomials, the radicals entirely cancel out, leaving me with simply a rational number. And the term here, conjugates, refers to two expressions in this form, 5 plus the square root of 3 and 5 minus the square root of 3. Let's take a look at another example. 8 plus the square root of 11 times 8 minus the square root of 11. Okay, let's multiply this out. We'll do a FOIL. 8 times 8 is 64, and then my outer terms, 8 times the negative square root of 11 is minus 8 root 11, and the inner two terms give me a plus 8 root 11, and you can see that those are going to cancel out. And then my, my last terms, the square root of 11 and the minus square root of 11, when multiplied will be minus the square root of 11 squared, which is just 11. And so I end up, after, after these guys cancel out, I end up with 64 minus 11, which is 53. Again, I get a rational number. Two, two expressions, two binomials like this, that are, that are just alike, except for the sign. One is positive and one is negative right there. Those are called conjugates. And when we multiply conjugates in this form, the radicals always cancel out. And that works every time. And we can actually show that it works every time by working out the general case. And I'll do that now. Instead of working out a specific example, I'm going to work out an example that involves variables. Watch this. If I have a plus the square root of b times a minus the square root of b, and you could have those arranged with the, the minus here and the plus there if you wanted to, as long as they're two conjugates multiplied together. And a and b here could be any numbers. So instead of, instead of a specific example, this is what we call a general case. This will show that this works for any, any, two, uh, any two numbers, a and b, arranged in this form. So let's multiply this out. I get a, a times a is a squared. My outer terms... There, a and negative square root of b give me a minus a root b. And then the inner terms here, a and square root of b, give me a plus a square root of b. And then my last two terms, square root of b times negative square root of b gives me a negative square root of b squared, which is just b. And these two terms cancel out. And I'm just left with a squared minus b. And if a is a number and b is a number, then that would work out to just be a single number. And the point here is that there are no radicals, no, no radicals in the answer. Multiplying conjugates always causes the radicals to cancel out. And this is proof that that always works, because a and b could be any number. Now I'll show you where this is useful. Sometimes you have a radical in the denominator, like in this example, 7 over 3 plus the square root of 5. And we can't just get rid of this radical. Remember, our goal here is to get the radical out of the denominator. That's what the rules say. We're not allowed to have radicals in the denominator. And we can't just do this, multiply by square root of 5 over square root of 5. Because when, when we multiply here, we have 7 root 5, and that's OK. But when we multiply the denominators, we have to distribute. And this square root of 5 multiplied by this, that would just give me a 5. The radical would be gone there. But when I distribute, 
and multiply the square root of 5 times the 3, I'd still be left with the radical in the denominator. So this approach won't work. So the question is, how do I simplify something like this? And the answer is, I use conjugates. Look at the denominator here, and I'm going to multiply by the, uh, a fraction made from the conjugate of that. I'm going to multiply by 3 minus the square root of 5 over 3 minus the square root of 5. Now notice that this fraction, of course, is equal to 1, because anything over itself is just equal to 1. And here the numerator and the denominator are the same. So I've just multiplied by 1. So I haven't changed the value of my original expression. It's still this thing. But multiplying by this particular expression is going to change the form of my original, my original mathematical expression. So here's what we do. We multiply across the top. This is going to be 7 times all of this. And that's going to give me, in the numerator, well, I need to distribute the 7. So it's going to be 21 minus 7 root 5. And then on the bottom, I'll do a FOIL. So I have, because what I'm doing, I'm multiplying this denominator times this one. So the FOIL is 3 times 3 gives me a 9. And then 3 times negative square root of 5 is a minus 3 root 5. And then 3 times positive square root of 5 gives me plus 3 root 5. And then square root of 5 times the negative square root of 5 gives me a minus 5. And then here we go. Look at these two terms. They cancel out. Minus 3 root 5 and plus 3 root 5. Those are gone. And I'm left with 21 minus 7 times the square root of 5 in the numerator. And in the denominator, I just have 9, times, or 9 minus 5, which is 4. And that's it. What this has accomplished is getting the radicals out of the denominator. I now have a, a rational number, so I've rationalized the denominator. This has had the effect of introducing a radical in the numerator, but that's okay. That's considered uh, allowed to have a radical in the numerator. That's acceptable. And we'll work through a couple more examples of this process here. The next example is 2 plus the square root of 3 divided by 5 minus the square root of 2. So I look at the denominator and I make a conjugate of that and I multiply by that conjugate over itself. So this will be 5 plus root 2 over 5 plus root 2. Now when I multiply this times that, I need to multiply the numerators and that will be a FOIL operation and the denominators. In this case I end up FOILing on the top and the bottom. So let's do it. On the top I have uh, first is 2 times 5, that's 10. Outer is 2 times the square root of 2. The inner terms are 5 times the square root of 3. And the last terms, square root of 3 times square root of 2 is square root of 6. So I have all of that over the denominators multiplied. That's 5 times 5 is 25 plus 5 times the square root of 2 and then my inner terms give me a minus 5 times the square root of 2. And you can see those are going to cancel out. And my last terms will be minus square root of 2 times square root of 2, which is just 2. And the numerator doesn't simplify any. I just have to keep all of those terms there, the 10 plus 2 root 2 plus 5 root 3 plus the square root of 6 over my denominator which ends up being uh, 25 minus 2 is 23. And unfortunately, I can't simplify the numerator anymore, but that's the way it goes sometimes. And here's one more example, and this one ends up simplifying a little more nicely. 3 plus root 5 over 7 minus root 5. So I look at the denominator, and I multiply by a fraction made from the conjugate of that denominator, 7 plus the square root of 5 over 7 plus square root of 5. And let's work this out. I'll do a FOIL on the top and on the bottom. And I get this. 3 times 7 is 21. Then outer is 3 times the square root of 5 is 3 root 5. And the inner is 7 times the square root of 5. And the last is square root of 5 times the square root of 5, which is just 5. And all of that will be over 
7 times 7, which is 49, uh, plus 7 root 5, minus 7 root 5. So, as always, multiplying by the conjugates like that, get the radicals to cancel out. And then, minus 5, or minus root 5 times a positive root 5 gives me a minus 5. Now, up top, some things can combine. The 21 and the 5 combine to give me a 26, and the 3 root 5 and 7 root 5 combine to give me a 10 root 5. And down below, I have 49 minus 5, which is 44. And I can simplify that one, one more time by factoring out a 2. Just divide everything by 2, and I get 13 plus 5 root 5 over 22, and that's my final answer.